Hi everybody, this is Michelle from Virtual Hand Care, your online hand expert. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to wrap your hand to make a fist. So if you've had a hand, a finger, you know, even a wrist injury, sometimes even elbow injuries can leave your hands very stiff, especially if you've been in a cast or a brace for a long length of time too. You may notice that you're having a difficult time getting that full fist back. Maybe you're, maybe you're here, maybe you're down here and you just can't quite get those fingers curled all the way down to make a fist. Sometimes getting that last little bit of finger flexion can be really difficult to do. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you my top four ways how to wrap your hand to make a fist so that you can get the mobility and the strength back in your hand. So these techniques, I use a variety of different type of materials. I'm gonna use an ace wrap, Coban, I'm also gonna show you a taping technique that you can use any kind of tape at home uh, with a glove. And also I'm gonna talk a little bit about using some buddy straps. And I will leave a link of where you can find these buddy straps in all the items that I used in this video today. So technique number one, we are going to use an ace wrap. Uh, you can use any kind of a, a stretchy type of ace wrap. You can use a Velcro boxers wrap, like this one here that actually has a thumb loop and Velcro. Anything like that can be very helpful, especially if you're doing this one-handed and you don't have somebody to help you. Now for this video though, uh, a lot of people usually already have ace wraps on hand, especially if they've had a hand injury, they might've kept the ace wrap that their hand was wrapped in. What I usually like to do is I like to cut a small hole hole in the ace wrap and right at the end of the ace wrap and why I like to do that is because I like to put my thumb through that because it is a nice way to anchor the ace wrap down and I like to make sure that I have the roll um, this way versus this way because it's really hard to unroll the ace wrap if you're kind of if you're doing it this way so do make sure that you have the roll turned up where you're able to easily unroll it so you're gonna put your thumb in the thumb hole that you cut and what you want to do is you want to go on the back side of the hand we're just gonna wrap around one time without worrying about what our fingers are doing. This is just gonna provide a nice little anchor piece. So after you come around the palm here, you're gonna try to bend those fingers as much as you can. So if you can only bend to like, you know, here, that's okay, that's gonna be your starting point. And what you wanna do is you want to take the roll and you actually wanna come up on top of the knuckles and then you're trying to pull down into as much flexion as you can as possible. So we're starting to get some knuckle flexion first. And then you wanna come down and we're actually gonna go around the wrist. And then keeping that flexion in the knuckles, now you're gonna come up on top and around over the small finger side. And what you're doing is you're going to try to pull, now you're gonna to try to get more of the tips of the fingers. And notice what I'm doing is my pull is actually in this direction towards my thumb. The reason for that is because when you make a fist, if you look on this side, our fingers flow in more of this direction. This is our normal finger cascade, and they actually move more towards the thumb side. So we don't want to be pulling straight down because that's not our normal movement. So you're coming around on top, and you're actually pulling more towards the thumb, and then you're gonna wrap around, again, same place, down and around that thumb. And if you need to kind of do a little bit of a, of a wrap around the wrist just to kind of anchor that down, I recommend that. And then again, you're gonna come around and now we're gonna do another roll over the top of the finger. So if you feel like the index finger or the small finger perhaps is not flexed enough, then go ahead and do another few rolls. So I'm gonna actually go around on the index finger and pull down and come back around. One more time around the wrist and then again I'm going to come back on top and pull down 
and back around. And you can do that depending on how long your roll is. You can do that several times and just keep going. And after each time you wrap around, I usually recommend to do a wrap or two around the wrist just to anchor that down. And you just go as much as you can and you can even do a little tuck this way to kind of maybe get those tips of those fingers and then pull it through the thumb. And then you can tuck that in just like that. And then you're gonna actually hold this. So make sure your fingers are relaxed. Make sure that this is not too aggressive of a stretch. It can be very counterproductive if you're stretching way too aggressively. Um, you also wanna make sure that you can hold this for a longer length of time. So this isn't a technique that you're going to do just for like, you know, 10 seconds or 30 seconds and then just take it off real fast. You actually want to try to hold this stretch for several minutes. So you can start with five minutes, then work up to 10 minutes. Uh, you know, you can do it for several minutes because what you're trying to do is provide a, a lower load, but a longer stretch. That is far more productive to slowly stretch your tight joints and tight tissue out than being really aggressive and doing it for short lengths of time. So wrapping technique number two is just using some tape that you might have at home. Say you don't have an ace wrap or any kind of a, a wrap of some kind at home, but you do have some masking tape. With this type of technique though, I do recommend you wearing a glove just so you're not putting tape on those already kind of sensitive fingers. If you have stiff fingers, usually the joints are pretty sensitive and pretty swollen, and I don't usually like to put adhesive or tape directly on the skin. And it's not something you wanna do over and over and over again as well. So you can use uh, gloves that you might have at home. You can use a dishwashing glove. Maybe you have a, a big glove that doesn't have a, a, a match. Or you can use a, a latex-free uh, glove like this one as well. So hopefully you have a glove that's a little bit bigger that you can actually put your hand in. So what you do for this one is you put the glove on. You're actually gonna put the tape on the glove to help stretch your finger out. So you wanna get a, a piece of tape that's big enough is we're just gonna tape a little bit around the wrist just to help secure that uh, glove a little bit too so it doesn't slide around. And that's gonna actually serve as your anchor point of where your pieces of tape are gonna go as well. Next, what you wanna do, and you could do this a few ways, you can just leave the tape on the roll or you can just try to get a big piece of tape. I usually like to keep the tape on the roll uh, just so it, the tape doesn't stick to itself. Of course, having another uh, set of hands is very helpful, but if it's just you, uh, this is how you're gonna do it, because I'm able to do it to myself too. What you're gonna do, we're gonna start with the small finger, and you're gonna put that anchor piece down around the wrist on the glove. And so then what you're gonna do is you're going to then again, try to bend your fingers as much as you can, but you're gonna put one piece of tape over the small finger, and it's gonna go the whole entire way over the small finger. So as you can see, I'm coming on top of the knuckles, then I'm working that next joint, which is your PIP joint, then I'm getting to that DIP joint, which is that smaller joint of the finger. And again, when you're doing this, make sure that you are pulling more towards the base of the thumb in that direction. Pulling down straight like this is not the normal movement of our fingers. So we're going to go towards the base of the small finger. All right, now we're gonna to go to the ring finger. Same thing, you're gonna anchor that piece down, come over the back of the hand. And then you're going to come on top of the ring finger and again, pull down towards that same spot where you put the tape for the small finger. And we're gonna just keep going. And again, place that tape down on the anchor spot. We're gonna do the middle finger knuckle of course, if you only have one finger that is stiff, 
then you would not necessarily need to do this to all the fingers. And to the index finger. Now the reason we use the glove too is because this tape really sticks good on the glove versus your fingers where you might have oils and, and lotions on the finger. So then the tape won't stick very good that way as well. So there you have it. Now I have a DIY finger flexion glove. Um, with this particular technique, because the tape isn't really stretchy like the Ace Wrap is, um, it provides more of a static type of stretch. If you feel like your fingers have loosened up and the tape isn't really stretching you, then do apply another a couple of layers of tape on. And then after five to 10 minutes or 15 minutes, however long you've been staying like this, then you can just easily pop that tape off and just slowly relax those fingers. And actually with this tape, I'm, I'm able to just pull the tape off and it didn't tear my gloves, so I could at least use my glove again. Okay, wrapping technique number three. For this particular technique, you want to use, uh, you can use either two inch Coban or you can use one inch Coban. Now the one thing when you're using Coban, uh, it's not reusable with this technique. So again, you may go through quite a bit of Coban, but I wanted to make sure I showed you this technique because it can be really helpful, especially if your fingers are swollen. For this particular technique, I'm gonna show you how to use the one inch to wrap a finger. So I'm just gonna do one finger, but you could do this for all the fingers if you wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, my one inch roll of Coban. So perhaps I have a very stiff, small finger and I'm just gonna wrap that finger first. And that's gonna help with any kind of swelling that you may have during this process. And again, like I said, you could do this to all the fingers if you wanted to. Then I wanna take the two inch wrap. I really like Coban because it sticks to itself. So you wanna start and just wrap around the wrist and have that be your anchor point. So because the Coban sticks to itself and because you've wrapped your small finger, you're gonna be able to get more of a stretch this way. And then I come up on top of the knuckles of that small finger or that finger that I'm working on. And then I'm coming on top and again, I'm pulling down into that thumb direction. So as you can see, if you're gonna use the two inch, you, it is very helpful. You can do it with all the fingers. If it is one finger you're working on, I do recommend you to at least uh, apply the stretch technique to the finger right next to it. It will just help it um, instead of having just one finger being flexed down and like the other fingers straight up. It actually will help relax the whole hand and allow you to get a better stretch. So we come around on top and pull down towards the direction of the thumb. You can apply a little pressure to make sure that that Coban is sticking onto that finger and then you come down as much as you can and then you can stick it down. And because this uh, sticks to itself, you don't need to continue to wrap around. You can just cut exactly what you need. So I have Coban around the small finger for swelling and then I have a piece around the wrist and then I have a piece over the top of the finger to help get more of a flexion stretch. And then you can just kind of pinch and push that Coban just to help it stick. And again, you could hold this for several minutes and um, continue to apply more Coban on top if you feel like you need an increased stretch. But again, remember, you should just feel a little discomfort with this and not a lot of pain because that can be counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So for tip number four on how to wrap your fingers, 
to make a fist, I recommend using buddy loops. Now I do have a few videos and I'll link um, a more recent one here on three ways to use the buddy loops to help you make a fist. Check that video out because the buddy loops can be very helpful to get that last little bit of flexion, especially the last little bit of DIP flexion. If you're trying to get that little tuck finally into the palm, these little buddy loops can be a very helpful way to get that last little bit. But do keep in mind that those other techniques are very important to start with, and then you can advance on to using something a little bit simpler to get that last little bit of flexion. And I will leave a link of where you can find these buddy straps as well as A straps and the Coban in all the items that I used in this video today. So if you found this video helpful, do give it a like and let me know in the comments below which technique you find most helpful. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.